Yeah, that's pretty good, man. I We're having fun today. We're good. Yeah. Great you, that's stories. How, now, great now, now stories. when you talk about rock and roll, the singers at Motown, I can't, I can't do that. I, I, I know who the Temptation are, but I don't know the words to the song. I can't yeah. think of, you understand what I'm saying? I wasn't into that kind of me, but I danced with it with the girls, you know? Yeah, I'm older than the girls, shaking the book. Yeah, I want to be out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Lee Morgan was murdered <laughs> by his wife. Why am I laughing? It was a sad thing. Murder yeah, is bad. Yeah, it was real sad when it happened. And Lee, Lee, you looked like Lee Morgan. Uh, you had the same Corvartis haircut, the same boots. Wayne Shorter was the other guy on the same label. Joe Battle was on it, too. That is when Wayne Shorter was on the scene. Then Art Blakey came out with an album with Wayne Shorter. Lee Morgan on tenor sax. uh, Cedar Walton on piano. Then that band broke up, and Art Blakey had a new group with him on tour every tour. Freddie Hubbard replaced Lee Morgan in the band after Lee Morgan got killed. Right, sure did, yeah. Well, see, when that album came out, with like, it wasn't many jazz people out at the time, just beginning to change. That's why, like Miles Davis, Charlie Parker did an album, and they mess up a tune, and they cut one, cut two. So they was reissuing those things like that. Now you can get cut three, cut four. This is Charlie Parker, he's dead now, and uh, then then you can hardly get anything in the catalog. But like I told you, the catalog was about this is the Swan catalog. Swan catalog. It was about, it's maybe just a little bit thicker than this, but it's a little longer. So so th- this is the thickness right here. Maybe Swan just a catalog. little bit thicker than that. And a little bit longer this way, like wider, a little bit taller. taller so this this, taller. this long and a little bit taller, so like like right. this big. Right, right. A- and this thick. Okay. Right. It's a little thicker than this. Just a little okay. thicker. I don't have it. It's so like th- as thick as my like, finger. Like that, basically. like this. Okay. A little bit thicker. Okay, yeah. And that that the Swan that, catalog. That's all, that's all the records that any album record. Not do you have? Yeah, that gets to have the album then. Seventy eight or whatever you don't want to order. You want to you look up the name. You go to alphabetical like a, you know, and and yeah. you see down there what album he got is it. If it's not in the catalog, it's not nowhere. You don't get it. <laughs> doesn't it, exist. It, it does, right. Man. That's all I'm saying. It, it was the Bible of music back then. That's all it was, man. That's yeah. all it was. So uh, what you're going to find in there, you you find Johnny Masters, you find Nat King Cole, B.B. King, you're not going to find him in here. Black music. Right. Basically, if they recorded uh, it, they recorded it, unless they were black who recorded it, in which case it wasn't recorded in that book. It was just white music, all the white music. Well, Ryan, I'm saying that if you don't have a no one to buy anything, why anybody gonna put it out in the first place? I see. What nobody's you're saying. putting it out, and nobody's doing anything. And like I said, the people in oh. the south they come out jug joints. Well, I was gonna say the Swan catalog was 25 percent. This is from you from earlier. I got notes here. The Swan catalog was 25% black artists, 75% white artists. RCA, Columbia, and Capital were the only three record labels. The rest were distributors. A distributor was not sourced from bootlegger. The distributor would have to buy from the manufacturer and put those records in stores and sell retail. When Lee bought records, he had the capital to be in business, to, to be able to buy in bulk, to uh, um, uh, to uh, in those days, uh, you had Gino Washington and Winslow Harris. Gino used to bring albums. Uh, Lee owes G- Gino. Gino used to buy 25 albums and leave them in a box on consignment. And Lee still owes Gino for that last box of records he bought when, but right before Lee went out of business in 1984. When you get five sales with no promotion, you think you can get 15 or 20 people to stay afloat. So you find pretty girls to work for you or something to bring the people in to help your business stay afloat. The more things that you try, the better you can make it work. That is how you succeed in business. You have checks and balances to find out if your books for the day are over or under. A computer does not have bias. Right. And that's what it's going to be. They come to it. But anyway, uh, some of the things that you said was a little bit wrong, but I'd like to correct it. Yes, please. Like what I was saying about... Um, well, like the record factory, I mean, 
company, like RC and Columbia, that's all it was then. Now, other people came out, they small people, they're not, they not on Capitol Records label, they're not on Columbia label, so where are you gonna go? There's no label out, there's no manufacturer, right? Correct. So, just like you, you recorded me, You this is your job, this is your yes, business, sir. okay? My honor, yes sir. Yeah, but my point is this, so you wanna, wanna record something. Yes sir. And you wanna sell it. Well, how are you gonna sell it? You just recorded it. The capital not gonna have anything to do with it, so who's gonna manufacture it? So if you sell it, where are they gonna get it from? Who's gonna print it up for you? So for you to, to sell manufacture, it. to distribute. Uh, my point is, there's a lot of things behind the eye in business that you don't know about. A lot of members of the food chain. Uh, there's a lot of things to make things happen. Things just, just go by itself. Okay, so Columbia, they reprint their own records, right? They their own manufacturer. Okay, so you you Columbia, and I'm Lee County, right? You got your records out. I got one. Get mine out. You gonna take mine? No, you're not going to take mine. Competition. That's what it is. I have to get my own, so I ain't no company. I just got, you just got one record. So you don't have a company. Yes, sir. It's simple as that. So that's why I said they had RCA when they were getting the records out. Other labels, I don't know anything about them. Do you? Columbia, RCA, and Capital Records. Everything else was other, was, it started out like Atlanta wasn't a factory. Atlanta was a label. Wow. Atlantic Records, yeah. Right, they they wasn't in front of they they but their own label. I don't know how they they had Atlantic Records came. They sold other records besides Atlantic Records, so you can go there and buy them wholesale. They had other records there, like you can come to my store and buy other artists, but you can't go to Columbia and buy rec somebody on Capital Label, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just a different name. That's all I'm saying. It's the same thing. There was the manufacturer, Columbia, RCA, and Capital. Atlantic wasn't a, a record. Then they formed labels after that, like we are, W-E-A-R-A. It, we are Atlanta and, and Asylum, I think. Uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, um, the guy with uh, Clyde Davis had something to do with that. He had, he had label... Um, uh, Angela Bofield was on uh, a, a Aristic label. It was Clyde Davis. Ariston. Ariston. See, that was Clyde Davis. Now that's a manufacturer. Now you can get it, Clyde Davis. He might have his subsidiary through the wholesaler, a Columbia Records. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But at that time, you had to be somebody. They're not just going to stock your records because your name, <laughs> you had to be somebody. I don't know how they do it, but that's true. Well, that's what it, that's what I'm trying to say is, you know, like the pinpoint high. But anyway, that's the way it was. But now it's different. You got Billboard out there, and it had uh, I, I was in store play before uh, 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 American Idol came on. They got American Idol, and then they got divorced. They got a lot of things. It's still the same damn thing. Amen. When I started, it was called in store play. I was the only one was doing it. I was the only one could do it because I'm the only one buying from the manufacturer. Black. First in America, if not the world. Right. Yeah. So ain't no if and no and on a shortcut to it. That's the way it was. Amen. See? And so like I said, and so some people, I mentioned General Washington. Yeah. He didn't have a distributor. So what he would do, he would come by my store and uh, other stores. He had a briefcase, suit and tie, Legino did. He recorded his record. He distributed it. You buy from him. And and I said Wendell Harris. He did a label too. Wendell Harris was the one. I think he bought the label album. He would leave, so he just take them here and you sell my company. That kind of thing. And when I went out of business, I think I had a box of albums. He never came back because I didn't. I didn't know he was alive until I saw him on television. Man, about a week ago, he, he's going crazy. Be, I didn't because I don't get out anymore. Wow, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? I didn't know Wendell Harris is still alive, <laughs> but he's appeared in some place here in Detroit. I saw it someplace. You know, you can't go anywhere anymore. I've been there and done that. You dig? Yeah. So, uh, so, but, you know, a lot of happiness still, but I'm not <laughs> out there with it. You dig? But anyway, now, if he had taken his label and had a distributor, 
work his label, maybe he could have been. Just you can only do so much yourself because you don't have the capital. You don't know. You got to. You just can't walk in there and say, "Play my record." You can't will it into existence. You, you, you got to work it into what existence. You got, who are you? And and hope it works. It's supply and demand. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you do is, you know what's happening. The time for everything. A time to build up. A time so, to break and down. That's the way it was. Yes, okay? sir. Please, yes, And so three. that's why some people, like, uh, some people do their own. That's how rap got started because uh, rap uh, in New York. The, those guys on the street, uh, what I think, street singing on the street. Uh, with their boom boxes, just with like the I did earlier. Boxes, with the, the and bass, they got enough voice. money yeah. through whatever, how they had the money, they find their own thing and came up with, am I right or wrong? You're right. And that's how hip hop got started. Speaking of uh, uh, guerrilla beginnings of businesses, there was a guy that bought studs for faded blue jeans. The, the Chester fellow started wholesaling that uh chester boots was it yeah well, but what happened is oh okay 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 go, go, go. okay this guy started buying studs for faded blue jeans then chester started wholesaling that the wjlb guy named george he was um he was lee's friend and sold at hart plaza he sold posters selling them to uh african people or like african themed posters to black people he saved his money and and put uh, an Eldorado, a Cadillac Eldorado on layaway. <laughs> he took his wife to Toronto three times using up two tanks of gas in one night. He traveled a lot. He went all over. He opened up next door to Lee downtown selling the same things that Lee was selling. You helped him begin to, and, and he made a whole life for himself only to open up right next to you selling the same stuff, stabbing yeah, you in the yeah. back. Well, you know. That's a little scary about it. It's kind of humor about it. But anyway, he used to come in and start a friend of mine. You know, we got to be friends. He would come in and dance all the time. He wanted to be. And he like what I was doing. He he, so, want, he uh, wanted to be the next. Yeah. And uh, somehow he got into wholesale. And uh, studs came out. You know, different thing would come out. Fashion. Buttons, fashion fashion item, thing. Accessory. And at that time, black uh, entrepreneurs. They was doing this thing, African stuff. They would have down things at Hot Plaza on a certain day to be African month or whatever. They sold incense and oil and whatever African purses and shoes and things like for African people use. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying? These studs came out, and we got him. I I told him some kind of way. I was gonna buy wholesale from him. He got the studs, and we he did pretty good, and he caught on. Like thing catches on. In fact. Huston had a blue jean suit with studs <laughs> around it. Really? And I went over there and bought it, and I paid over a hundred dollars, like a hundred dollars for it. And I walked back to the store, and they laughed at me because I paid it on a blue jean, you know. But the stuff was on it, <laughs> around the pockets, and that was nobody seen nothing like that. Just like faded blue jean came out. You dig what I'm saying? Like now, blue jeans now, you holes in them. I got a pair back there. I got a pair back there. You can see them. <laughs> See, I only would like buy Levi blue jeans, Levi, with the Lee on the back. I just started it. That was the first. When I was going to high school, that's all we wore, blue jeans or khaki pants. That's all we had. And uh, they had two kinds of blue jeans. One cost a dollar ninety-seven. I didn't like them. They did. I like mine that fit tight and something. Anyway, in the Levi's, I bought those. How much they, did they cost? Three ninety-nine. And I bought, I worked, and I bought mine. And so when I went to school, everybody, I had three ninety nine. dollars You know what I'm saying? They, they couldn't afford those. But anyway, and then a lot of kids went to school where clothes was made, homemade. They say mama made. <laughs> Potato sack? Potato sack. Or no. manure, manure sack, right? Didn't you say manure? Remember, remember no, wrong? Would no, they make it off? Of, because that's no, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, fertilized sack. Manure, basically, yeah, fertilizer, manure, poop. Oh, I don't know what it is. I heard be white sand like we gum. That's all I know about it. But we didn't want to I wonder use if it, it because we chemicals. We in country. We don't know about that. We didn't want that. We would use for our fertilizer manure, horse manure, cow manure, save and pile it up and put them away and put those the crop and that's the way farmers did it. But see, chemicals we don't. I didn't want to go chem. 
Kim was just coming around then. I've been in a long time, man. <laughs> what was I telling you? <laughs> but anyway, he put his car in layaway. I he bought it was an El Dorado. I had a seventy five El Dorado, and he and he got. I think he got a seventy put. He got a seventy five too. He but he put it in layaway, and when he got it out. Till he got his down payment, something like that. And he would come by the store <laughs> every day and he would dance. <laughs> it was a lot of fun back then, you know. And so when he got his car, he told me, man, I went to Toronto. I used two or three things again all night. He said, went to Toronto twice. And he said, I did twice. <laughs> yeah, we rolled up there and rolled back and rolled back and rolled back and, rolled back and went to Bell Island. He said, man, I swear to God, he did. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but anyway. Yeah, it is hilarious. And well, well, you know, your cars <laughs> didn't get so so far on a tank of gas, like on on well, one I tank. No, but he was glad to get his car. He just told me why he rode all night. <laughs> uh, what, one one tank of gas. Uh, how how far would one take a gas get you back I in the day? I don't know. I don't know. I just really did what I needed. And, and and that the the double jeans top and bottom, the blue jean suit from Hudson's. How much did that cost you? I never. It was very expensive because when I got back to the store and the girl at the store, and everybody, man, you paid that? Are you crazy for that? But anyway, it caught on. Well, hey, I'm I'm wearing double denim right now. Was it was yeah, it this yeah, dark? Yeah, but you know, it caught on. That it caught on. But then. On the poor people wore blue jeans. What I was just saying. Well, well, let me ask you. What was it? Was it this shade of blue? Was it darker? Was it lighter than this dark blue? This is kind of like a navy no, blue. Late, no, blue jean. They kind of, they kind of light. The, I wrote a dark blue jean. The same word then. And was it now, a Levi suit? Was it? Was it Levi brand? Do you remember? Oh, somebody, did it, no, it wasn't. It was like something. Like, it was a new kind of cotton. You understand what it is? Lighter, lighter yeah. denim. But anyway, he had to, it was blue denim. But I'm yeah. just saying the material is denim, Brian. It doesn't matter. I just—it's a great yeah, story. But I'm just still saying that. Uh, but 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 kind of tangential to that, and and also relating back to your, your country upbringing, when Lee went down south with his tinted sunglasses, the preacher would not start the service until Lee took off his sunglasses. Yeah. Lee still has those sunglasses. The people were all wearing white when he went to church. He'd wear white. And Lee had on the wrong kind of collar on his shirt when he went to church. He got in trouble for that. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. Lee is about to bring the sunglasses that uh, we just referenced that he wore to church and got in trouble. These are not sunglasses. These are red glasses. See, but I was in church with him on. He, he told me I should move my glasses, sunglasses. <laughs> Here's the glasses here. Hmm. So years ago, that looks fashionable. Years ago. They wasn't that, doing that then. You didn't wear the people who wore dark glasses, sunglasses. You know how it got started as far as I know? From jazz people who did drugs. And I, I learned about it through jazz people when they play in a nightclub. You know they have sunglasses on. Don't you remember when Bill Clinton went on a senior hall show to play the saxophone? He put on some sunglasses. Yeah. That offended me. Because he was acting like the old timers. No, that's what black people did in those days. Yeah. They took for granted that when you wear the cover your eyes, your eyes... You don't want nobody to see how you've been doing drugs. In, in the implication of it. Right. And so and that's what they thought then. They wasn't wearing tinted glasses. Tinted glasses haven't been out all the time. Those are stylish. And so years This is my first pair of glasses I bought. My first glasses prescribed from the doctor. These are. I still have them. What year? 60s or 70s? They after I came here, so. Uh, got to be in his, his 60s. I so got him here. This is a pair of, of prescription tinted uh, glasses from right. the 60s. You went, but you, you moved from Arkansas to Detroit. You went back to visit family in Arkansas. You went to church one day. I went to church and I had on these glasses. 
and the preacher refused to begin the service. Uh, he just said, well, I please remove my glass and we get started our service. That's what he said. Put you on the spot. Yeah. And then you had the my wrong. My son and, and then, too, like, uh, the church, I'm just saying, like, I was talking about things change, things change every day. Car clothes and everything change. Hair stock, everything changed. And back then, that's the way it was then. That's the way music was then. It's not that way now. Things have changed. I was talking about that's the way I was then, you see? Yeah. And uh, and when you went to church on the Sunday, if you wore a suit, you wore a white shirt. When you get dressed up, a man, he put on a white shirt. They didn't have color shirts then. But when I was came here, I started working at Zokawa Department Store. They sold clothing. It was a department store. And I would check in the clothing. That was my job. I was... Man. When merchandise come in, I check it in, okay? And the shirts came in with button-on collars. You got on a button-on collar now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, they ain't been here all the time. Really? And when he came out, and I remember the girl working at it, uh, I forget, Angel. Or something. Anyway, we were friends. She's white. I mean, you know, it was white then. And they accepted me like, uh, you know, but the white people didn't accept me in Allen Park at the time. They hadn't seen black people holler because I'd be walking down the street and people pass by in a car and the kids just follow pass and they'd be looking out the one. They ain't never saw nobody but like you know you felt yeah. that way. And then that's what we was talking about, then and then so things are different. That just the glasses and the shirt was just one of the items that came up in this conversation. That uh, and I like colored shirts. I got pink shirts, shorts I wore tie with I wore blue shirts. I got a lot. I love blue. I hey, wear more blue color. than I do white shirts. My fa- my second favorite color, yes sir. I like color shirts. Or my my favorite color, yes. And sir. I like button down collars. And I and that's what I would wear. I wear a suit and tie, and I button down collar, a shirt, you know. And, and uh, but you know, I had Tom Long, but I'm just still saying. Then, dark glasses was considered, they didn't know about it. It wasn't fashionable then, like it is now, okay? Yeah, and it was so, looked down upon. Like, was... And Bill Flynn, like I said, when he went on, on t- hence, a senior hall show and picked up the saxophone so I can play like black people, like his wife said she carried hot sauce around the purse all day, all the time. Hillary, right? it offended you. It does, it offended me. Play, playing down. I, I, back to your country upbringing, the Harvard Bar only had jukeboxes. That was in that was in Arkansas, right? The Harvard Bar. Harvard Bar is in Detroit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lakeboard. Actually, we'll, we'll we'll okay. So, um, okay. Here, when when Lee first went to the city, they didn't have any juke places for blacks. You would take your horse and mule and wagon to the city and tie them to the post. And the animals would stand out in the sun waiting for you all day. You, you felt bad no, about that. No, that wasn't me. That, I said people did that. Not you, not you, but you would go to the city. You'd see these animals yeah, tied up. You felt bad about that. Oh, yeah, I did. That's where they, right. Huh? Lee's maternal great-grandfather was a preacher emeritus at, just, or at the church, even at age 102 when he, when he passed away. Lee saw... Uh, his, Lee saw his maternal great-grandfather preach when Lee was just eight or nine years old. You remember seeing your grandfather preach? Oh, yeah. My great-grandfather. Your, 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 your mother's grandfather, your great-grandfather. Yeah, I saw, think I saw him preach once or twice. He lived to be 102. Yeah, he it, might have been 105, something like that. Wow. He was over 100, I know. It, and he preached at the same church that you went to? Yeah, yeah, right. The whole family, it wasn't one church in the community. See, in the South, when we started out, you know, you got all this land, and the people, they miles apart. Then it's called community, settlement or whatever, settlement. And then they build a church. They build a school, the settlement. So the school we had wasn't from the state or the county. It was from the church. Somebody teach the kids the ABCs and how to count. I don't know. I went there for a while. Man, and then, school. Yeah, we went there for a while. And then you got to walk through the woods and go through that because we was in the woods, man. Like, like no civilization. At Finkel and something, I'm not sure what the other cross street was, um, there was a machine called a seabird. 
was it? Uh, it was four or five feet high off the ground. You put a nickel or a dime in, and it would play music for you. It was a jukebox. Right. That is how people discovered music back then. WCHB got their records that way, too. When Barry Gordy came around, things changed. This is all from you. You told me earlier. Mm-hmm. Then RCA came around. Then the zany machine from Germany arrived, too. The black folks with the bootleg record out, they needed to get a record distributor or else sell it out of the backs of their cars. Then Lee got into business and started a top 10 list, arguably prior to Jet Magazine, whose lists were not even set at uh, uh, the number 10 every time. You you, you chose that number, top 10. Every great idea has to start somewhere. Hardly anyone had record player to play their music back then. Right. People didn't couldn't afford it. People didn't just like when television on everybody just like now, everybody doesn't have cable. Yeah. How many people don't have cable? A lot of people don't have cable. Right. And when they got cable, how many people got just don't have nothing but the basic? Right. That's the cheapest you can get. So I'm just still saying in those days there's no record player. So if you got no money, you ain't got no money to buy a record player. How you gonna play? A, you ain't buying no records. That's right. In in fact, uh, going back to going back to when you you came from Arkansas, um, Strong Arkansas right. was the only place with music. El Dorado, Arkansas, y- your hometown, f- had forty. Well, really, you grew up just outside of El Dorado. Well, see, 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 right. Well, I I moved. I left out of that when I from down there. I told you I was fifteen. Around fifteen, I just. Passed to the eighth, to the ninth grade. Had a wife and a kid. Well, I well when I passed to the ninth grade that summer, that's when we, she got pregnant. You understand? I'm out of school, and I'm supposed to go back to school my junior year in ninth grade. When I get ready to go to school, I register for school. I, I want to go in the city that I'm living in. El Dorado. El Dorado. I can't go there because it's out of the district. I got to go back to the same district where I came from. Why are you leaving switching district? Well, because I'm married now and I'm living up here. Well, you can't go to school being married. You know too much. <laughs> that kind of thing. So that means I can't go to school, right? I'm in the eighth grade, just past to the ninth. But I determined I wanted to finish high school to my promise my mother. Yes, so sir. I had to go to the same school that I just came from, which is, 30, 40 miles away. Man. And the only way I can get there, I got to go on the road, highway, Th- and catch a ride. Somebody picked me up. There's time people picked me up, had a pickup truck. I had to stand in the back of the truck. I sat on the floor, and it's raining. But I still went to school, and I made good grades. And when I got out of school, I got to, the bus going to bring me, can go so far up to where I, my hometown. I get, but I catch a ride to El Dorado because that's where I live. Then I go to work. I worked at night. And I had a wife. I had a baby. But I went to school. Okay? And I played basketball. <laughs> And I made good, and that's, I'm end up where I am today. That's all I'm saying. I got, you know, so that's why I don't accept no excuse. And people in there, they get ride to school and free meal and books and things like that, and they still don't make it. Want you to take my money and pay for that goddamn education? That's why I'm. Ta- uh, I did, you know. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's what. I, and so this is what it's about. You know, anybody can do it if you want. It's hard work. And you can't say it don't happen. I know it happened because it happened to me. And from that, I'm end up where I am today. Okay? That's all I'm saying. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but I had changes on the way, and this is probably the thing I had. But, uh, and the, the Barry Gordy, like, um, he took a step further, and uh, I was in a position that I could list the records of what I'm selling. Well, somebody come out with a record that, like, Elvis Presley, when he was on that Sullivan show, that's who helped us. When Elvis Presley was shaking 
his thing. The camera went up from his waist up, right? Well, the white people, again, you have to say that, they want to know where it came from, how he do all that. You know, Eric Smith was cool. And we always said he liked been around white black people because he had feeling so can sing. I like Eric Smith myself. I, you know, and that's what you could hear him down side, but you couldn't hear him up here. I mean, uh, you could hear him down side, but you didn't hear our stuff down south. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, every Presley, everybody played every Presley. And so then, little by little, then Barry Gordy came on the scene, and he finally got his thing out. I, I don't know who, who was it, Smoker Robinson? I don't know who one got him all across, but anyway, he, went to, he had to go to CKLW. It has to go to seek. Ain't no if, ain't no and. It's got to. They got to pick it up, and they play it. And when they play it, it goes to some other channels. Picks it up out of New York and whatever. You understand? Other than that, it's not gonna get out of Detroit. Cause ain't nobody gonna hear it. You can tell somebody about it, and everybody's talking about. It. I got a good record. They ain't gonna play it cause you say it's good. You might find out if your friend like you taping me and you, somebody else. I'm just saying, you know what I'm trying to. But that's why I, that's what happened. And Barry got out, and then they want to hear more. And he got another out, whatever he got the money for, because sometimes he didn't have money. He said he went ahead and got money, didn't he? But he kept going, going. He kept bigger and bigger and bigger. I did the same thing. Kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then uh, 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 we, I don't know how we started listening to records. That's Miss Key Wells, CKLW, because we listen to their records. We're not selling that stuff on that program, but we, Miss Key Wells put things on there anyway. You know what I'm saying? And put ours on there too. Yeah. And so when Miss Key Wells left, then I bought direct from the manufacturer. Okay? So they always call me. I'm the one to get a list anyway. But when they would call me, I, I don't know if I explained to him exactly that I'm on the place. I don't know if I did that. Hmm. I'm not saying that. I don't know say why I had to. They knew your voice. They knew but you were I, the guy. But I filled out my papers and got my credit, and they still called me in the phone number, stayed the same, da da da. And I'm name. I, you understand what I'm saying? It's a lot went through that. <laughs> it just didn't happen in your hand. You got to make things happen. That's everything. And so, and when I got the power, I had done, and, and they, people took care of me, and I took care of them. And here I am today, okay? And so, um, it, it's there, whether we like it or not. That, that's, what it, that's what I'm saying. You know, it is, is what it is. Can't say it might have been. All you got to do is take out one letter and what is something there to put a period or something there about something that changes it entirely that's all i'm saying and, but 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 the way it was unchangeable you can't change the past you know no shoulda coulda woulda you were there and you I made a one. difference you no yes you were the one the one uh, the one part of the one i was the one the, the, one. the one am i right or wrong you're right and you came you came from arkansas but you, you were talking earlier strong arkansas the only right. place with music el dorado arkansas had forty four thousand people in it el dorado was the second largest city in southwest arkansas little rock was number one el dorado was number two the music circuit like with bb king they would stop in el dorado and the next town was pine bluff and after that is little rock and after that is texas there was no radio except country and western so all you had to listen to if you turn on the radio, uh, in your, Ran the record. What, what, it, uh, back in, in El Dorado was Roy Rogers, Dill Evans, Gene Arthur, whose horse is named Champ. Right. We, uh, Lee had the radio. The first movie Lee saw was a cowboy movie. They brought a, a, a movie projector in the movie to the school, yes. the two-room yeah. school that you grew up going to. And everyone in the, in the area, everyone in the, in the town came out. They had to put water in the heater. There was no gas or electric light in the two-room school. They had uh, kerosene lamps. Just two rooms. Um, oh, I just I got my pa my my pages off here. Just two rooms. Something something. I am so sorry. I, I, fortunately, I number my pages. Unfortunately, mm. I can't keep track of them even after. Yeah. Oh, right right here. Uh, it looks like a mess. Oh, and then I, you know I gotta change my. Okay. 
I was gonna say, because you, you brought this up, and this is I thought it was interesting. Um, yeah, see, a lot of time I got my back said something, then I think about it afterwards, you know. Uh, just there, there, there were just two rooms in your schoolhouse. You watched a cowboy movie. That was the first movie Lee ever saw. Was a cowboy movie in the two room schoolhouse in El Dorado, Arkansas, when he was a little child. Mm -hmm. There was a song called Honky Tonk that everyone listened to when Lee was younger. Yeah, dog. Kenny Gamble was in Memphis. They had the OJ's and Stax records. I don't know why you, mm -hmm. you mentioned that after, but yeah. uh, the first cowboy movie, the first movie you ever saw, was a cowboy movie. Uh, uh, some people f brought a projector, brought a movie reel, right. a couple reels. First on time I ever saw a movie. A and do you remember the the name of the movie? No, I or who don't, was I in don't it? Remember the movie, but it was, uh, I never saw nothing like that, man. A, and I just didn't believe it. You know, we'll go behind the counter, the thing, and the screen, and got to be somebody back here. You know, we had never seen nothing like that. How and old? And by the you? way, we didn't have no le lights in the school. We didn't have lights in the school. You couldn't go that night. Had to go there during the day. We had a heater in there. You got to put wood in the heater. Oh, not water, wood. Wood. Oh, it was a wood heater, like a, yeah, a wood, yeah. wood burning stove, basically. Like a wood stove, right? But you, you can heat by those stoves. Uh, like that, like a Franklin stove, and then and then you had kerosene lamps for for light. Not at that. We had that at home when oh. we had the money. Sometimes we didn't have the money to have no light. So we, <laughs> when the sun go down, we go to bed. I, my eyes used to get crossed at night because I got to do my lesson. Your homework, homework from school. And we don't have no lights. You know how I do my homework? I sit by the, on the floor, the hob, they call it, the bricks down here, keep five, five, you know how it is. Keep five and popping on the floor inside the hob, got brick in the front. Yeah. I sit down there and, and read, learn how to read in my homework. I just do it till my eyes get crossed. And when one night my mother whooped me because she thought I was doing it, didn't want to, because you know we made clown, you know? And she thought I was climbing, but I wasn't. My eyes get crossed every night. And I go to sleep, they wake up, be all right. And the only thing I know that I was straining, trying, you know, and I still passed make a grade. I went to school, played basketball, and then worked at night and had a wife and had my own apartment. That's amazing. And I ended up, I'm back again. And I end up where I am. That's what I said. That's why I don't like taking nothing for no answer. No for an answer. You can if you want to. I fed myself. I had a room. I didn't know how to cook, but I had a. You had nothing but a room anyway. You had nothing but a face bowl in there. And was a, no, you didn't, face bowl wasn't in there. You got to go down the hall. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody on the apartment on that floor was upstairs. Everybody on that floor used the same bathroom. We had one bathroom and a tub. Everybody got to say, about four, four, two, four, about eight family up on the floor on that floor. I lived on the second floor. It was two floor apartment, upstairs and downstairs. First time I ever saw a building, lived that high up there. And uh, I was going to the porch and looked down at people walking down the hall and thought how lucky I fortunate I was. And my mother, my brother would come by every morning and wake me up because I couldn't wake up to go to school because I'd been working at night. So on the way to town, he'd bring my mother, my mother worked at a laundry and did laundry. And my brother, my brother would drive her to work every morning. He got to stop by my apartment, come up there and wake me up so I can get dressed and go to school. Yeah. Cause I couldn't hear the alarm clock. Yeah. But I still made my grades. Passed with a C average. My, 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 I got my uh, foot card around here. You, you seen it? Yeah. Got my book, my graduation and shit like that. But we're gonna see all that cause I got a lot of paperwork and stuff I want to do. Want to get yes, in the sir. case of that, but I'm just still saying, man, and that's the way I am. You understand? I don't, you know, you got to do things. You can sit and shoulda, coulda, woulda all you want. It ain't going no damn well. Amen. And and if I could write and could spell, I can write, but I can't spell as good. I would be a bug. I figured because I did this and I'd be. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> This, uh, it, any way I can, I'm. I, you, your life story is amazing. I'm trying to get it out there. These stories, and, and, and every time I talk to you, even today, you, mm. you you told a half a dozen stories at least so far. Sitting down, just mm. this one sitting yeah, man, that I, I haven't heard ever yeah, before. No need yeah, for yeah. two years now. Going you know, yeah. almost. Man, it was hard, man, and we didn't have food, and uh, people to my kids can't learn on understand. That's bullshit. 
We got up for breakfast in the morning. You know we had to eat for breakfast? Make yeah. some some whole, whole cakes. You know what whole cakes are? What's a whole cake? Whole cake. Oh, I think I heard that. A whole cake. Something, something like a biscuit or something like that. You make it and pat it down, it'd be like a biscuit, but we, it ain't soft like a biscuit. But it's the same thing. And, and you all you had some syrup, that you, homemade syrup that you made. Some of us done stuck to turn the sugar. And that's all you had to eat. That's all you had to eat. You might have a piece of bacon that long and big, and that's it. No meat. We, we didn't have no, where you gonna get meat from? And that's all we had to eat. Went to school, and that's all. And I get to, and when I got money, I eat 10 cents a day. My lunch, my lunch gave me 50 cents a week. That's five, 10 cents a day I spend. I buy bar candy and soda pop. That's my lunch. I asked those cookies, cheese rich in the cookies, for 10 cents a nickel, and nickel for the pop. That's 10 cents. That would be my lunch. That's all I eat until I get back home. I get back home by 4 o'clock, by 4.30. And then we're going to eat some some cold stuff, <laughs> some greens, some bread, cornbread, and that's it, and some water, and go to bed. And happy. Now you get all this shit, and they still ain't happy. Go out and kill people, that's bullshit. Put these motherfuckers, make them clean up for the city, put them in chain, and you work, and you're going to pay your debt. Bring, br- 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 bring back the chain gangs, you're saying. Bring to minimum wage and you stop doing that. You ain't going to want to work a minimum wage. I can work and make $10 an hour. Why won't I get work for you? Don't make sense. That's your stop. You understand what I'm saying? Letting his ass out and getting the part they ain't going to do it and let him do it again. Lee cares about facts over feelings. Right. Pause for empaths hiss. Incidentally, is it true that empaths travel <laughs> Let me try it again. Incidentally, isn't it true that empaths travel in zigzags? Empath zigzag. They're traveling. I could One, say maybe two, so. Three. And maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe so. They okay. might travel all the way. I don't know. But no, it but, travels. But, but you, you state the facts of what I'm trying to say. You, uh-huh. don't, cut, you don't cut corners. Oh, there. no. I don't cut corners. No, hell no. Speaking of facts, and, 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 and uh, Lee, you, you were married three times, four daughters, right? Three daughters and dog. Four married four times, three, three daughters? Three 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 times. Three wives, three yeah. daughters. Right. Okay, sorry. I I'll get it right one day. Uh wait, you, wait, 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 wait. I got I had to think. How many times have I been married? Four wives. Here? Four wives. Four wives, three daughters. Two. Yeah, four wives, <laughs> goddamn. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> No, I, 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 I confused you. It's my fault. That's no, I, hey, man, I just <laughs> Damn, I remember. <laughs> so uh, here, here's a turn of phrase you might have heard, but I'll see. <laughs> Even if you haven't heard it, I want to see if you agree with it or not. Teapot arm, she has no charm. Does that check out, Lee? Teapot arm, she has no charm. And you, uh, you know, I'm slow on that, man. But I'm... Teapot arm, she has no charm. Like you walk up to a gal, she's oh, got her hand on her hip. A teapot because the hip. You know, okay. like, like a teapot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I get yeah. it. I tell you, I'm slow on shit like that, man. I've been working all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You're too busy working. Yeah, right. like you said. Yeah. But, but there's a phrase teapot arm, she has no charm. Okay. You know, like, like you know, kind of like. I got up, you. Yeah. Would you say that's true? The ladies, you've met, been around a few, few ladies, you know, half the population in your life. Well, the people I've been with, uh, you know, I don't regret it, really. I mean, I learned from them. I had, you know, that we had ups and downs, but I passed that. You know, about they left happy, I hope. And I did. I'm hope. You know, I'm happy. Not happy. I'm happy I'm not with them. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I, I, speaking of uh, uh, hitting on the ladies, LeBaron Taylor was a player. He drove a white tornado car and would hit on the girls at Lee's store. The Moniques would rehearse at the store and, uh, and at Lee's house. Robert D., uh, the, the radio host, he was white and married to a black girl. Tony Orlando and Don, the group was two blacks and one white singing. That was unusual at the time. Right. I was going to use that at the time. But it's, it's time 
kind of weird, you know, but now, but that's the way it was then. Yeah. And it's always a breaking point. Yeah. It's always a starting. You understand what I'm saying? I remember Ernie Durham used to had a white Cadillac. And uh, I was on 12th Street one day, and he would I see Ernie Durham come through with top down with this white girl on the car. I think she's white or something. Anyway, and everybody was looking. Then and they said that's not. They were arguing about Ernie Durham because he's on the radio. They didn't know <laughs> it was tape they was playing. There he's go right there and he's on the radio. <laughs> I've seen that. You know what I'm saying? And they were saying that about Ernie. And he would be because he was, you know, he was player too. <laughs> But, uh, uh, Lee was in Howard Stern's company at some function one night. Lee didn't ever meet or see Howard right. Stern. But uh, he was in. He's hanging in Detroit here for a long time at, uh, and I was with. I think at the place on corners or the uh, uh, ballroom of on corner. Um, I might actually have it written here, but I got my notes all jumbled. Bruce Willis came out of Detroit. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Br- Bruce Willis has been in the news because he's got uh, dementia at such a young yeah. age. And he used to be around us too. Uh, we would, I'd be at some place and he would be in. He was around in Detroit for a while. Lee was at the jewelry store and lo- and sold something to Bruce Willis for twenty dollars. You, you remember that T- twenty dollar item you sold to Bruce Willis? Or, or maybe he sold something with Bruce Willis on it, or he sold signed something to you. Uh, moving on. Lee knew Proof's father, who was in the record business, involved with Florence Keywell. When Proof got killed, that's when Lee found out that he knew Proof's father. Proof, the rapper. who was Mike the Hanks. Yeah. And they said it was Proof. Uh, I didn't know Proof. Very famous rapper here in Detroit. Yes, sir. But see, I wasn't in the rap. Yes, same. Uh, uh, in fact, I was working at uh, uh, in the office of the old Bagley, and uh, Proof was coming in the same building. They tell me, and uh, I, that's when he got killed at the time. And I didn't, I didn't know him because I was at the air, and and, and uh, somehow, but he's the son of the person that I knew. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Sugar Sugar Schwartz was with Aurora when P, where Pete Hall came out of, and Sugar Schwartz signed Kid Rock, and Lee knew Sugar Schwartz. Yeah, Sugar Schwartz uh, was telling me that when he had when he had Kid Rock, I think he had him on another label, a private label, and he went to Capitol. He sold it to Capitol, I think something like that. But I know Sugar Schwartz. I how, know. how far do you go back with the man? Well, Sugar Schwartz was a, he was a cool cat, white, <laughs> but he was cool, I'm saying. A Jewish guy, I would assume, Schwartz. Like Jewish, and yeah. me and him got along. We like, same thing, you know, yeah. we're no color. And uh, and uh, and we, his name was Sugar Schwartz. You know, Sugar, at <laughs> that time, Sugar, Sugar anything was good. Sugar Ray Robinson, <laughs> <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> you understand? And he was Sugar Schwartz. And he was a, a cool cat. Well, I guess they'll, they'll start calling me Sugar Ellis then. Uh, so make <laughs> yeah. myself a little better. And, and so well, he Sugar had... Sugar Kennedy, no. And he had Kid Rock, and uh, and he told me, and he played some dubs for me at the time. And uh, But see, but Kid Rock wasn't black music at that time. You know, but I think he said all over. He's the kind of guy telling us. I'm yeah, I'm John. very blessed and honored uh, uh, to to just even be associated with a, a gentleman named Bob Ebeling, who um, Kid Rock lived in Bob Ebeling's place for for a while, and Bob played drums for a couple weeks uh, with Kid Rock, and even recorded was a co- re- uh, recording engineer early on with Kid Rock, a, a later Grammy nominated mm-hmm. recording uh, mm-hmm. Eminem early on before mm-hmm. going on to. Uh, even uh, uh, other huge, huge mm-hmm. projects. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love if if he knew Sugar Shorts. Perhaps I'll ask him. Yeah, you know, I wish to. If you, right, right, because I, I don't know if he's still living there. Cause yeah. we was cool. You know, he would come down and we hang. You know, we come. In, you know, he's a cool That's cat. Great. That's all. Yeah. And yeah. Don Allen's sister knew Lee. Don Allen. We can come back to it another time. 
Foodie knows Lee. Foodie. Oh, I know. Don Allen, this jacket, right? Oh, yep. At, at the station. Well, see, I just met him down here, and uh, he was in my building, and he gave me his card. And uh, at that time, I didn't know it. G GPR had changed over to what it has done at the time. He was telling me about that. You know, I, I don't listen to radio that much. Oh. But anyway, and it, it came up by Foodie, and I said, yeah, I know Foodie, too. Foodie knows me also, you know. That's wild. Because Foodie came along back in the day, um, uh, Marvel's Mall. Yeah. And um, I knew Marvel's Mall before he started in the, in the disc jockey because he was working next door to me at the parking lot. And he would come in the store every day, and Dan, I was throwing him out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he had um, all the girls turning their hair purple or red or whatever. He began that art, uh, yeah. uh, uh, unnatural hair color yeah. was Marvelous Marv, your friend. Right, so and we did, a, we did a so thing crazy. at the Bicentennial. They did a rose for me at the Bicentennial. We made a lot of money over there. It was, you, 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 it was your idea with him right, across right. the street. Uh, across the street uh, on Jefferson, on from, Jefferson, across from uh, Robinson Furniture. Right, right. You rented out a hall. Right. At that time, at that area, wasn't black wasn't it, just beginning to get down there at that time because see, Lana Street was crappy next street over from Jefferson there, and it was ghetto all the way down to pay to the boulevard. And we are, you know, I was ghettos, but see, it's changed, and so, uh, <laughs> yeah. And we had it at the Byzantine. We had a lot of people there too. Man. My brother, my brother, uh huh, did roast me. Raised money. I don't remember what we made, but it came out okay. And it wasn't for, for charity, it was for you. Right. We, we, for or both of us. You split it you, halfway. For both of us, yeah. Me and Ma. Uh -huh. Foodie knows Lee. Foodie works at WJZD now and bought Lee's two, uh, uh, your, your second store on, on Livernois. Uh, from Lee years ago. Jack Brokenshaw was mm. a disc jockey mm. talking about Miles Davis playing Round Midnight. On Woodward, there was a big building. They had one Sunday a recording studio. Lee was there for the recording. They asked Lee if he would be there for the recording. Lee loved it and will never forget it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, I said uh, Jack... Uh, Brokenshaw? Jack Brokenshaw. Something Shaw? He, over the phone, that's why I wrote down. Yeah, I understand. I, I, I did say Jack and Brokenshaw. Was something about Lady Mondegreed it. Let's, let's see, see, let's see, let's see. Was it, was it, it was the dish, was it Jack Brokenshaw? Yeah, I'm quite sure it was Jack Brokenshaw. Because it was, oh, it was the longest month. Round midnight. Round, do, 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 it began uh, to tell. Round midnight, round midnight. I feel very well after sundown. Delores Mark wrote that to him. And when, one day he was playing it with a Jack Book show where it was a disc jockey. It's another disc jockey. What's his name? Damn. I think I might have a disc jockey messed up. I thought about that after I talked to you about that. We come back to that on that on another time. All right. Lee was in trouble with taxes, just like Will Smith is mm -hmm. in 2023, in the current year, 23, 2023, Anno Domini, in the year mm -hmm. of our Lord. Lee went to Lee's father-in-law. Coleman Young was his father-in-law's friend, and his father-in-law rode in, into the, in the plane to the World Series with the players. Lee had season tickets. The father-in-law had Lee go to Franklin & Associates to fix things with his taxes, you have to work above the profit line to stay in business. Yeah, well, here's what happened. When I went into business, my father, ex-father-in-law told me I need to get a good tax lawyer. And that's where a lot of us, Will Smith and um, 50 Cent and a lot of them, Isaac Brothers, they came into that kind of serious, my father said that. I had a friend that worked for the tax department and he at downtown he come in the store every day and uh he was already done my tax so he don't do my business at the store but in three or four months in three months something like that he was doing me wrong 
it wasn't done right. Wasn't adding up. Right. And uh, if I had stayed with him, I would have been going out of bidding right away. So I, somehow I went to my, my father-in-law, who took my advice, Frank with an associate. Now, he was a guy who had a 12th grade education, Man. who worked for the yacht club and things like that around people, and he was friend. He was, uh, he was a, a salesman for O'Donnell Import, the largest import, I think, here. On the east side, he got percentage out of every wine bottle sold on yeah. the east side. That's how big he was. He was Money. a friend of the guy who was the coach of Detroit Lions because he would ride on the plane when they had a World Series. His name was, I can't think of his name. He came from California, was a coach down there. They was buddies, and he hung down at Nemo's all the time. My point I'm trying to bring, and he convinced me, finally, I need to buy the tax man. So... Uh, I went to Frankfurt Associate, and uh, they did me right. Good. And that's what I'm saying. You have to have a tax lawyer, a right, because the way I was doing it, you got it. You just it's more than just taking money in. It's so much money you got to pay to the government, and my register shows that. It tells I'm every time you ring up, it tell you, and then you have to keep the receipts of your tape come out of the register. And all the, the paperwork for seven years. If the police, if the audit by the police, to, I mean by IRS. The IRS, if you don't have proof, it's what they said goes. Yeah. So if you got your proof, then you see what the mistake is. Just like anything else, check and balance. Amen. And just like in politicians, you can't check and balance. That's just bullshit. You can check and balance. Amen. You see? Yes, sir. And uh, so, uh, so that's uh, that's that's what I want to say about that. And you have, you just can't, you know, like your clothing and your business, you write that off. You're supposed to. You deduct that. Some people don't. They pay it out of their pocket. Yeah. And then you get in tax problems. All that's important, man. Everything you spend, you're supposed to have a record of that. Amen. Yusuf Latif. He had an album called Morning. He would play all these instruments. When he came into town, that would be the last thing he played was right, Morning. Right. No one would leave until Yusuf, Yusuf Latif played that tune. The one that exposed him big, the person, was a big man, Cannonball Adderley. <laughs> Yusuf didn't make it on his own, didn't make it big on his own at least. Yusuf called Lee Brother Lee because he was a Mohammedan. He would send Lee postcards when he was out of the country. In the postcards, Yusuf Latif would address Lee as Brother Robert. Right. Yusuf Latif came from Detroit. Right, right. And he could play all instruments. He did the same morning. Uh, well, see, when I came here, I think he had just left. He left right after I, I didn't get a chance to meet him. I don't, I think I might have saw him at Klein Show Bar or something like that. But he left right after that and went to New York. And uh, but when he would, he, he did a tune, played at Overbrook. I think that's called Overbrook right here in Detroit. Yeah, uh, Yusuf Latif was all. Uh, he did an album called Last Train from Overbrook. Right. And you always wanted to go there. Uh, Jewart Lifeson and all the other Detroiters are on the album. Right. H- right. How do you say his name? Something Lifeson. Kurt. Kurt, Kurt Lifeson. Kurt Lyson, uh-huh. and he was, um, his wife was my ex-wife's best friend. They was a real good friend. Wow. Uh-huh, yeah. And he would play, uh, he played piano, and he would play at uh, Hobby Bar sometime. I, I was thinking about, yeah, they had, they, it was a small club, but they did have a place, a piano in there. Just no, you didn't have no other instrument, I don't think, just a piano. And Kirk would play that sometime on Sunday. I used to go up there on Sunday and, and listen to jazz, man, because the only place you could hear jazz at the time. It was a cool bar, and the people were cursing and drinking people. They get to cursing, acting the damn place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, cool. it, it was cool, like you said. It was cool people there. Uh, they, 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 they knew how jazz. to carry themselves. Yeah. yeah. It might be cool. Yeah, that was cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hung around there a lot. And that's why I got my start, man, hanging around. 
uh, uh, Hyperbar and this time, and it plays on another place. TULC was down on Grand River and Grand River. I can't think of the street now, but everybody know what you know. Uh, I can't think of the street down there, Col past Columbia in that area. Uh, a place called uh, TULC. Before you get to Claremont. We were talking earlier, you were invited to a, a recording session here in Detroit, was it? But by a, a disc jockey invited you or the band himself, the band leader? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Jack Sorrell or Jack Brokenshaw. Jack, that's too, that's what I was confused a while ago. But anyway, they had it up on what was that? Uh, I think it was, who was it, Jack? He did it, and I think it was going to come out on several labor. Anyway, I, they wanted me up there when they recorded. I did go, and I stayed there, man, I was back and forth. At, and that's the only one I've ever been to was, was up on Whoopers. And I never saw the reaction of it. But I did write a liner note for Paul Humphrey. He did an album, and I wrote the liner note, stuff on the back of it. Yeah. And But the album wasn't released. It was released in, over in Japan. I think it's Japan. We gotta find that record. Well, you well, wrote the liner right, notes. Right, right. Paul sold his entire thing, Kool Aid and everything, to um. To, I got some tapes over there. To to to, to, uh, to Japan. Japan. Uh, Smart, good businessman. He sold everything. The Kool Aid that could, you know, I got to take, but he gave me Kool Aid. Yeah. Yeah, that album. But he sold all the rights, and so I never did get a chance to see the liner. That's all I'm saying, because it went over there. Man. You know, and see, there's a lot of thing and tricks in there that you don't might not know about. Just like I understand that J David Ruffin, Jimmy Ruffin, David Ruffin's brother, was bigger over in Europe across the water wherever than David Ruffin was. Jimmy Ruffin was big. Say he couldn't walk the streets; he had to have bodyguards. He had out uh, what become of a broken heart. He did that back in the day. But see, over here, David Ruffin. I mean, Jimmy Ruffin, you know, David Ruffin with The Temptation. He was the man over here, but his brother David is bigger across the pond at that time. That's what they was out at the time. I don't know. And who did the uh, arrangement of that song was Paul Reiser. My friend, talk about it, Motown. Yes, sir. And that's the biggest thing. Paul Reiser did the arranger of it. Man. Yeah. The Harvard bar only had jukeboxes. All the music was played on the radio. Lee had something to do with it. The Harvard bar only had jazz music on the jukebox. They had a pianist there named Kurt Lifeson. He played piano but never made a name for himself. Jenny Cox and Harold McKenney, all from Detroit. Did, 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 did uh, Jenny Cox and Harold McKenney play at the Harvard bar? Yeah, those were the kind of group that sometimes would play up there on Sunday. I don't think it was getting money. City in, you know, go up there and play. And every place people go up there and have a drink and congregate and talk to people, you know, cool people, you know, something to do. And, yeah. So I thought it was a cool place, and that's, that's how we got a little exposed about jazz. And that's why jazz was so small in Detroit. When you started having concert, we know younger people started liking jazz. And when Cannibal Alley did uh, that tune, a lot of people bought that. Then Herbie Hancock, Watermelon Man, water, you know, that. That's easy jazz. The jazz people call it rock and roll jazz. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because it's commercial. But see, Miles Davis, he play whether you like it or not. That's why he didn't sign an autograph. I'm an artist. This is the way I feel. I'm painting this this way. You know what I'm saying? And that's where, but see, it's changing. Now it's commercial. But I like it, some of it. <laughs> you know, I don't buy it, but the thing I buy is. To stick with me, like stuff like Freddie Hubbard, Miles Davis. I listen to that all the time, man. The same, that kind of stuff. That's what I like when you listen to it. When you buy something just because you got it there, you don't really like it. Like rock and roll. I can put on some rock and roll, man. I've been in the mood for temptation. And then what I like, I got something. That's okay, but you know, yeah. I ain't in love with nobody to be wishing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff. It doesn't interest me. So I listen to it. Jazz, you know. Now, when I had a uh, girlfriend, I'd be listening to Luther Vandross. 
<laughs> you had something else going. Uh, Jerry Pinkett, turn there. out the light, turn out the light, let's light a candle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm into that, but you know, hey, <laughs> that train gone. <laughs> well, well, my my dear, near, uh, cherished, treasured friend, uh, time to turn out the lights and 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 for the last train to to head out. Uh, uh, thank yeah. you very much. Turn out the lights and light a candle. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Kennedy. Thank you, thank you. Wish I had a candle and someone oh. lighted too. Okay. Before we let the people go, what something? Uh, leave what, what you say? Wisdom for the <laughs> folks at home. <laughs> Do you have any? Wait, let, let me let me reset my my uh, let me reset this little. <laughs> okay. Actually, we're going to do listening with Lee after this, but just as a closing. W- wisdom. Wisdom for the folks at home. Um, do unto others as you wish to be done to you, and be true to yourself, and, you know, it's I don't know what to say, man, <laughs> really. But just do that. Do I know as you wish to be done to? The for everybody world. to do that. And nothing else don't matter if you don't do that. L- love your neighbor as yourself. Right. Love everybody as yourself. Okay? Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah!